Hello everyone, welcome back to Maker Mindset. This is the second video in the series about firmware update. This time we are going to download the Marlin files and install Microsoft VS Code. So let's continue. This part of the video is going to be pretty quick. We will download the Marlin files that we are going to need to compile our firmware. So first, open up your favorite browser, go to Google and search for Marlin firmware. The web address for the Marlin firmware will be marlinfw.org. You should download the latest version. At the moment, it is 2.1. We are going to download the latest release that has been patched with some bug fixes. And that will be the 2.1.x.zip file. We also need to download the configurations zip file. This file is located on GitHub. For you to download the zip file, you will need to click on the code green button. Then you need to go down and click on the download zip link. At the downloads menu, you can open the downloads folder. Now we need to address a restriction on Microsoft Windows which imposes a limit of 255 characters to the length of the file path, not including the driver letter. Now, because of this reason, you should not extract the Marlins folder on your desktop, on your documents folder, on the downloads folder, or on any usual folder like this, because some of the files inside of the Marlins folder might end up having a path that is longer than the Windows file path limitation. In addition to this, if, for example, when configuring Windows, you chose a username that has a space on it, like John Smith, you will have problems during firmware compilation because VS Code doesn't like spaces on file paths. So, to be on a safe side, we should create a folder called firmware right at the root of the C drive and then extract the modeling folder there. If you don't pay attention to these little details, you might end up having problems when trying to compile your firmware. Now we can open the Marlin zip file and copy the entire Marlin folder into the firmware folder. Now let's go back to the downloads folder. Now we need to open the configurations zip file. Now open the configurations folder. Now the config folder. Now the examples folder. And here we need to look for the folder of the manufacturer of our motherboard. In our case, Creality. Here we need to look for the folder of the model of our printer. In my case, it will be the Ender 3 Pro. Now pick up the notepad where you wrote down all the information about your motherboard and look for the version of the motherboard that you have. In my case, it's version 4.2.2, .2, so that's the folder I need to open. Now you need to copy all the configuration files located on this folder. And then, go back to the firmware folder located on the C drive. You will have to open this Marlin folder. Now, open this other Marlin subfolder. And here, you can paste the configuration files you copied earlier. You will have to override the configuration files that are already here. Now that we have copied the Marlin files into the firmware folder, you can go back to the downloads folder and delete the zip files. We won't need them anymore. 
on this part of the video, we are going to install an IDE software from Microsoft called VS Code. IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment. An IDE tool is designed to help software developers. There are many IDE applications available on the market, but VS Code is one of the more popular at the moment. The VS Code application will help us view and edit the Marlin files that we have previously downloaded. It will also allow us to compile our firmware. In other words, it will convert the Marlin code into machine language, which is the ones and zeros that the 3D printer's motherboard will understand. The end product of this conversion will be the firmware file that we will load into the printer. So, to download VS Code, you will need to open your favorite browser, go to Google, and search for VS Code. The VS Code website should be your top search result. Now, click on the download link, and that should take you straight to the downloads page. Now, download the version that is most appropriate to your operating system. The download will actually take a little while, I just sped the video a little bit. On the Downloads menu, you should click straight onto the Open File link. You can close the browser now. First, we need to select that we accept the license agreement. Now, you should click on the Next button, Next again, Next again. Now, pause for a second. Here, you should tick those two options, which just means that when you are browsing your files with Windows Explorer, you can right-click on a file that is supported by VS Code, and you will then be able to select to open that file with VS Code. It just makes things a little more convenient. Now, click on Next again, and then click on the Install button. The installation of the main application is pretty quick but there are a few extra components that we will need to enable as well. These extra components are called extensions. But I usually make a pause here as soon as I finish installing VS Code to make a little privacy configuration tweak. If you don't mind having Microsoft spying on you, you can simply press Ctrl and the right arrow on your keyboard to skip to the next part of this video. If you are still here, you need to go to the menu and select File, Preferences, Settings, now search for Telemetry. Now go to the drop down for Telemetry level and select the option Off. You won't need to save or do anything. Your selection will become effective as soon as you make it. Now it's time to install the extensions that I was talking about. You will need to open the Extensions panel on the left and search for Platform I.O. Here is the extension. It features this orange bug icon. It's hard to miss. Now you need to click on this blue Install button here. Here, as you can see, the status says that it is installing right now. Now, Platform I.O. has just installed, but you still have to wait for it to install a few extra components such as the Python interpreter and a few other things. Just be patient. When the whole installation is finally completed, you will see this message on the bottom right asking to reload now. Just click that button. Now, Platform I.O. appears as a vertical tab icon on the left-hand side. That's it. We're done installing the Microsoft IDE VS Code software. That's it for now. Next week, we are going to generate the firmware file and then upload it to the printer. 
So now, go down in the comment section and drop a little note. I love to read your feedbacks, your suggestions, and some of you made a couple of corrections that were very helpful. If you want to support the channel, you can do so through Patreon and now you can buy me a coffee. Information is in the description. And don't forget to leave your likes, they are very important for the channel. And I want to ask you a favor, please, please, please don't forget to subscribe. This channel cannot be monetized until it reaches 1000 subscribers. Here is the registration button. If you want to watch the rest of this series, you can click on this link here on the top and at the bottom you have a video that the YouTube algorithm thinks will be the best fit for you. So, bye bye now.